The Devil's Kitchen. That's the name given to this geological reserve in Victoria, Australia. And it's somewhat fitting. After all, this land was, at one point in time, the literal embodiment of the word Hellfire. After it was drastically altered within only the past few million years, following some significant volcanic activity. The volcanoes might not be so prominent in present day, but if you know what to look for, you can spot volcanic vents everywhere. But the Devil's Kitchen is remarkable because it has some of the most spectacular columnar basalt in the state, along with many valuable treasures that were sought after and, after much investigation, were eventually found. And this is its story. Seemingly overnight, this quiet land suddenly became dominated by the roar of erupting volcanoes, which spewed forth voluminous amounts of fast-flowing lava emitted from thousands of vents scattered all over the land. When these eruptions first began, there would have been minimal warning, as the ground literally tore open and started to gush out lava. When Australia became volcanically active again, its initial commencement would have been a terrifying sight to see and hear to any animals alive during the time that these eruptions occurred en masse. And yes, these volcanoes would have made their presence known. Their sounds would have been a mixture of the Hawaiian and Icelandic type of low, constant roar, accompanied by the explosive sound produced by the Odstrombolian gas slug, which occurred in specific, more explosive varieties. And this area was no exception. It sat for hundreds of millions of years, unchanged by everything aside from the slow, withering touch of erosion. Only for all of this to change on one fateful day, when lava flows first emerged from the deep and began to bury the ancient land beneath layer after layer of lava flow, which, when solidified, turned into this basalt that you see here. But as you can see, there's a marked difference between the lower portion of the rock face here and the ones on top of it. And that's because this was the deepest part of the lava flow. It was very quickly smothered over by proceeding lava flows. And as a result, it took longer to cool. These columns form as a result of said cooling. The shrinking that occurred when this lava went from flowing to solid, and then from hot to cold in the process, cracked these individual pillars of basalt in a columnar fashion. The reason for this is because of thermal expansion and thermal contraction. Hot things expand and cold things contract. That's the simplest way of viewing what happened here to form these incredible columnar basalt columns. Along with this, though, was the eruption of this channel's very first sponsor, Raid Shadow Legends. The world of Raid is expanding ever more, like a fluidic basaltic eruption. Yes, I know, I'm awful at puns, but you know what isn't awful? The crazy amount of content that's available for free in Raid Shadow Legends. There are literally hundreds of champions to collect, featuring a super deep and addictive RPG-style battle system that allows you to be creative and unique in your approach with each battle. And because it's on your mobile, you can lay waste to your opponents anytime, anywhere. So what are my top three locations to play raid? Well, in a super volcanic caldera, and in Devil's Kitchen whilst cooking up a snag, and inside a random mine pit also whilst cooking up a snag. Hmm. The developers of raid have proven time and time again that they care about their content and they have shown constant and undying consistency in their desire to improve and expand the game. It's not hard to realize that Raid is showing no signs of slowing down. And that's highlighted by the release of Raid Call of the Arbiter, which is in full swing now. Celebrate this fantastic limited series today, with the addition of new characters like Artak, a mighty orc overlord. The best part is that Artak will be available for free. All you have to do is log into Raid for 7 days between now and the 24th of July. If you've seen episode 1 of Call of the Arbiter, you'll definitely want this guy. And if you haven't seen it yet, what are you waiting for? Check it out and then log in for 7 days to get Artak. If you haven't started playing yet, use my link in the description or scan my QR code to get unique bonuses. I'm talking about epic champion Drake from the Lizardmen faction and other valuable things like energy refills, skill tomes and XP boosters. Just hit my link in the description and I'll see you on the battlefield. Now back to the lava flows. Lava flows are very cool because each is unique, and even parts of a single flow can differ in composition or explosivity. Some are more gaseous, others more volatile, and some are calm oozing flows. And the shape and texture of the basalt that's solidified here is dependent on what type of composition is released and what environmental factors come into play during the flow. 
If lava contacts water, a steam explosion will produce a solidified version that differs from other parts of the flow that did not reach said body of water. As you can see, some of these basaltic rocks are vesicular, meaning they contain holes. These holes are from the large amounts of dissolved gases released as the lava hardened. Other basaltic lava flows though were so low in viscosity that they carried very little to no gas, and as a result, it solidified as this beautiful rock here, known as bluestone, which isn't vesicular, and is a more solid structure as a result. We quarried bluestone to build homes, warehouses, churches and more in the earliest years of Australian settlement. And damn, you gotta give those hardworking Europeans credit for producing this type of incredible architecture that's just timeless and ageless in its appearance. But quarrying basalt by hand before explosives would have been one heck of a job. In certain places, such as the old homestead in Greenvale near the Tullamarine Airport, you can still see the chisel marks made by the old settlers in areas where this bluestone was quarried. So yeah, there's quite a bit of variance regarding the basalt released in the past 7 million years. But basalt is exceptionally low in silica, unlike the silica-rich felsic rocks that are highly erosion resistant, such as granite. And this is why these lava flows occurred to such a voluminous extent. Because when the composition of magma is devoid of high amounts of silica, the viscosity of it lowers, giving it the ability to flow, and for volatile gases to readily escape the lava, too. But because these volcanic rocks were devoid of large amounts of silica, that also means that they are far more prone to erosion. And this is evident by just how easily the waterways have carved through the layers of basalt in a relatively short time. In area where basalt dominates the land, you'll always find these steep gorges formed as the river system slices through the volcanic rock, slowly working its way down to reveal the sedimentary material that had sat on the surface here for about 400 million years. And that very same act of carving has produced the Devil's Kitchen, and what an incredible landscape it is. As you can see, quartz is literally everywhere here. Major deep lead mines operated here in the 1870s and 1880s. Shafts were dug to intercept the ancient river that flowed through here before the basaltic eruptions occurred, so that they could extract the rich amounts of gold from the ancient bedrock. And man, did they put in the work! There are massive piles of river-rounded quartz cobbles and boulders stacked up all over the place, lying alongside significant piles of the worthless sedimentary rocks the miners pulled out of these ancient riverbeds while they were chasing the much sought after gold laden quartz gravels. The work that was put into this area was quite immense. It's forever altered the landscape, that's for sure. When these guys first arrived in this area, there would have been minimal surface quartz present here, except for any that was carried from upstream from a place that wasn't covered over by the basalt, of which there were a few by the time of European colonization. But in general, if we were to remove all of the shrubs and trees, we'd see many gaping holes from the still open mine shafts littered all throughout this area. On top of this though, what's even more remarkable is the adits dug into the cliff faces here. They horizontally blasted into the basalt to intersect any other buried rivers or tributaries that weren't so evident on the surface. And boy did they come across some damn good ones. An adit exists from this side of the gorge all the way through the basaltic plateau and out the other end in Happy Valley. And this was apparently an amazing feat to have accomplished at the time. This adit's existence prompted me to delve into an excellent 300 page thesis on the area that explores the region's gold mining and settlement history. The original township that popped up here was actually called Devil's Kitchen, which is pretty metal. It was later named Spring Duller and then to Piggerite, only for the town to slowly crumble and fade away from memory over time. And in the present day, very little remains of this township aside from some scattered ruins amongst land that is now used for grazing. But in its heyday, during the 1870s and 1880s, some crazy stuff occurred here. It was one of the only mines where boats, out of all things, were used to sail across flooded old workings. Three ships were built and operated for a period of 12 months to sail a distance of 152 meters or 500 feet from the shaft, and this was done at a depth of 100 meters or 330 feet deep. One can't help but wonder whether or not any remains of these boats exist in these shafts today, but the flooding renders it dangerous beyond reason to explore it, unless... Nah, seriously, please don't. So the Devil's Kitchen really is something quite spectacular. There are many places in Victoria where columnar basalt exists en masse, 
One site that most Victorians know is the one found in the Organ Pipes National Park, which are far smaller than these beasts in the Devil's Kitchen. And that's why this area is a designated geological reserve, because these are some of the best columnar basalt in our state. But one thing that's very interesting about this place is that it's one of the few areas that really emulated Ballarat and Creswick in the amount of water that was present at all times and was an unyielding element to contend with, as pumps were run 24-7, sometimes to no avail, in an attempt to pump water out of the shaft back up to the surface where it would run downstream into dams and other areas to be utilised. But it would inevitably seep through the porous bedrock and slowly work its way back down into the deep leads again. And the yields here were equally as rich as the areas mentioned above. Getting anywhere between 100 to 400 ounces of gold a week in these mines was common. Today's price of 2,877 Australian dollars per ounce would have earned you an astonishing 287,763 to $1,151,054 dollars. Not a bad week's pay, that's for sure. I just wanted to thank Raid Shadow Legends again for sponsoring this video. Don't forget to check out the game using my link in the description box or by scanning the QR code on the top left of the screen to get insane bonuses for new players with an epic champion. And as always, thanks for watching.